The whole world was created just for me. What a statement! One may think that that is actually a very selfish, narcissistic attitude. That this whole world was created just for me? Well, you're not wrong. Actually, in the Holy Book of the Talmud, it is written that everyone has the right to say that this whole world was created just for me. What does that mean? So let's break that down. What it means that, yes, this whole world is existing so that you can be there. Yes, you and I have the right to say that this whole world was created just for us. Which means that God Almighty, when He chose us to be born, and He brought us to this world, and He gave us life in this world, it was because the whole world is there for us. For us to exist, for us to accomplish why God put us in this world. Once in a while we wonder, what are we doing here? Why are we here? Why was I born now? Why is I born in this generation, in this time of life? What does God have it for me? Yes, there is a reason. There is a specific reason why God chose you and I to be alive today and to exist in this generation, in this time and age. Because only you can accomplish that needs to be accomplished. And that is why God put us on this world. God put us on this world because He has given us a mission. God made us His ambassador to do good. So when you realize it, you're not insignificant. Don't diminish yourself. Don't underestimate your existence. But rather realize, wow, God chose you to be alive now, in this generation, in this time, because God has a mission for you. That mission is a journey, a journey that begins at birth and ends at the time when we finish our journey, at our time of our passing. In between that time, it's an amazing journey. When you wake up in the morning, you say, thank you, God, for giving me another day. And yes, and say, thank you, God, for putting me in this beautiful world. And thank you, God, for me living in this world so I could say, yeah, gosh, this whole world is just there for me, but not just for me to take, but for me to do. Life is not just what can we get from the world, but what can we give to the world? Life is not just about being a human being, but it's about being human. Life is not about why we live to eat, but we eat to live. We put things in perspective that this journey in life is a very small journey. At the amount of years that we live, we don't know. And every day we pray that God gives us more days, more years to live. And every day we wake up and we're alive, we say it's a beautiful blessing. But what are we doing with this time that we are here? When you were to stop for a second and pause and say to yourself, Wow, the whole world, the whole universe is created just for me. Then you realize that you're not just another person. You're the person. You have been handpicked by God. You have been formed by God. God blew into you a soul of life. Yes, so that you should exist because you have a mission that only you can accomplish that mission. So this journey in life is not just about the world as it is, it's about the marriage. What can we do for the world? And the world truly responds to us. The world rewards us. The world gives us food. The world gives us water. The world gives us oxygen. The world wants us to exist and gives us every potential, every opportunity to continue to exist so that we can do our mission. So now you ask yourself the question, so why am I here? What is the mission? And what is it? Why am I existing now in the world? What does God want from me? 
Why doesn't he tell me? Why doesn't he just give me an instructions? How am I supposed to live my life here? The answer to that is that God Almighty has a plan for every single one of us. King David writes it in the book of Psalms, chapter 31, that God decides man's footsteps. Just open your eyes and you'll see how things happen right in front of you. They're not a happenstance, they're not a coincidence, they're not even serendipitous. It's by design, it's meant to be, because God is counting on you to make the right choices. So how do you know how to make the right choices? That's where God gave us the Bible. God gave us the gift at Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments and the Bible. And God told us, let's follow at least the seven general Noahite laws. For the Jewish people, you got to follow 613 commandments. But when we follow what God told us to do, then we get to realize that we have a beautiful mission on this world. And that, yes, God gives us the ability to accomplish that mission. But when you think to yourself, yes, the whole world was created for me, it's not to boost your ego. It's not to make you selfish, narcissistic, but rather... For you to realize what kind of opportunity it is that you have been empowered to accomplish something for God Almighty in heaven. But realizing we're not enough because every single person that's living here was also born for a specific purpose and a reason. So we are all living in this world as one beautiful community. We need to learn to coexist. We need to love each other. We need to respect each other. We need to care for each other. And we need to be sensitive to each other. It's almost like the old analogy about the boat that was floating along from going from one side of the ocean to the other side of the ocean. And then one of the cabins, he was listening in and he heard that his neighboring cabin was drilling with a chisel. So he knocks on the door, opens the door and says, Sir, what are you doing? And he sees him chiseling into the floor of the boat. And he says, mind your own business. This is my cabin. I can do whatever I want. And his neighbor says, you, you can't. If you bore a hole with the chisel in your cabin, we're all going to sink. We're all going to perish. It's not about you, but it's about us. And you think about this parable, that each one of us in this world, we need to think about the next person. It's not just about us. It's what I do, how is it going to affect everyone else? Because it is truly a ripple effect. Our good deeds will create a positive atmosphere. One good deed leads to another good deed. The same thing is the opposite. When we do the opposite of good deeds, it creates darkness, negativism, and that itself has its own implications. So we as human beings need to once in a while wake up and realize how lucky we are to be living in this time and age. How lucky are we are that God chose us to live in this world and how fortunate are we that God chose to give us a mission and the mission in this world is to have unconditional love, to be kind, to be generous, to be sensitive, to be complimentary, to lift people's spirits up, to be loving, to be caring to our loved ones, to our neighbors, to our friends, and to everyone we can, to walk around with a smile, be happy, be proud of what's going on. Even if things are not going your way, the way you would like it to be, remember that God is there looking over your shoulder. God is there protecting you. God is there guiding you. Because God put you in this world. Because yes, the whole world was created for you. So let's do our best. My dear father, may you rest in peace, had a beautiful saying. He'd always tell me, you do your best and God will do the rest. So every day, let's do our best. And we can rest assured that God will do the rest. Because indeed, God just waits for you to make an effort and he will finish it for you. The expression that our sages have referred to is you just open up a hole as small as a pinhole. I will open up for you an opening as to a ballroom. So God just wants us to make an effort. 
show that you are a participating partner in this world, in the creation. When you make your effort, God will complete it for you. And this world is such a beautiful world. People often tell me, oh, it's a crazy world. I say, no, the world is not crazy. The world is amazing. People may not be well, but the world is a beautiful world. God gave us a beautiful, perfect world. It is us that we choose to desecrate the world, to desecrate each other, and to create darkness where there needs to be light. So do not underestimate your existence on this world. Also remember, a little bit of light pushes away a lot of darkness. So every moment you have a chance to transform darkness into light. When you have an inclination that's inclining you to do something negative, transform that and do something positive. When you are harboring a grudge, some negative energy on someone else, the greatest sacrifice you can do is transform that into something positive. Because we could always find something positive in everybody. Every person on this world is a reflection of God's image. And some of us, it's a little hidden than by others. Our job is to reveal it and to appreciate and to realize how we're all children of God and we are all living in this world together. We are all on the same boat sailing together to the destination. And the destination is to make this world a dwelling place for God, mm -hmm. to bring spirituality into this world. And yes, we are partners in creation. We are an extension of God. Each one of us has a little bit of God in us to be able to actuate this and to make this world a better place. And the way we do that is just by sharing unconditional love, doing as much kindness as you can, whether it's random acts of kindness or direct acts of kindness, just being kind, being sensitive, being gentle with our fellow human beings. That is how we're going to push away the darkness. And that is when you could truly say, Yes, this world was created for me so that I can make a difference in this world because we are all children of God and we are all empowered to make this world a better place, which we can do and ultimately bring this world to its perfection, which will be the coming of the Messiah. And we pray and we hope that that happens speedily in our days.